Hi, it's Brian. I just recently returned from the Telluride Film Festival where I saw 13 films. My two favorite films that I just talked about recently on the channel are Poor Things and Saltburn. If I had only seen these two movies at the Telluride Film Festival, it would have been enough. I mean, I have been on a high, you guys, since seeing Poor Things and Saltburn. They are two of the most original, creative, daring movies I have seen in the last five years easily. And the same way I was on a high after Sundance last January, after seeing Past Lives, like that movie got me through the first six months of 2023. Like, obviously, I would love to watch a great film every day, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you go weeks, potentially months, especially when it comes to films released in theaters that you don't really love that much, that for whatever reason don't speak to you, that don't take any chances. I mean, that's why in July, Barbie and Oppenheimer, seeing those two movies the same night was so exciting. And then August was kind of quiet. I was just anticipating the Telluride Film Festival. I was hopeful that I would see some good films there. I'm really happy to report of the 13 films I saw at Telluride, I only disliked one movie, and I would say there were two other films I was kind of so-so on, like six out of 10. But then I would say 10 out of the 13 films I liked or loved, it wasn't just Salt, Burn, and Poor Things that I walked away from this festival feeling really good about. There are many other movies I really enjoyed that I do think are going to be big players at the upcoming Academy Awards. And today I wanna to talk about a film that is imperfect, that's a little messy, I would say, in the first hour, but has two incredible performances and a third act that took my breath away. I'm talking about the new film, Nyad, which tells the true life story of athlete Diana Nyad, who in her 60s decided she was going to pull off the unthinkable, the seemingly impossible. She was going to swim all the way from Cuba to Florida. Now what makes this story interesting is that in her 20s, she actually did attempt this swim and she got pretty far, but didn't make it. And then based on the film, like for 30 years, like she basically gave up her swimming. I mean, she was still doing things as an athlete and taking part in the world of sports in some capacities, but in terms of doing things that was really going to get her recognized in terms of her athleticism, not so much for a long time, and then it's like she turns 60, and even though everything she reads that she hears says, okay, you're 60 years old, time to put you out to pasture, there's nothing left for you to do, she's like, no, like, I'm not done. And it's just kind of an epiphany one day, she's like, you know what, I'm gonna go do what I meant to do at the end of my 20s, I am swimming from Cuba to Florida, and this time I am going to make it. She believes in herself so much, even when everybody around her is like, you can't do that. That's crazy. You couldn't do it in your 20s. What makes you think you could possibly do that in your 60s? And she's like, I don't care. I'm going to train. I'm going to get the right people behind me and I am going to make this happen. And so that's kind of the setup of the movie. The filmmakers do not waste time in getting at what this movie is about. No, I would say by like the 20 to 25 minute mark, she is training, she is getting ready, and as we come to learn, she did not make just one attempt at this swim in her early 60s. There were many. And what I really responded to in Nyad, what I responded to the most, that made me cry on more than one occasion in the second half of this film is this idea that no matter how old you are, no matter how many people say, that's impossible, don't do it, if you believe in yourself, you have a dream, if you are steadfast and certain that you can do it, you will make it happen. That's the main idea of this movie. And I found that element of this movie so inspirational because it transcends just the subject of this film. It doesn't have to necessarily be a swim from Cuba to Florida. It can mean a million different things to a million different people. Like that dream of mine I've just kind of given up on, it's too late, I can't do it. There is still time. If you really believe in something and you wanna make it happen, go after it. Now I went into this movie with high anticipation because I just recently made Annette Benning and the elusive Oscar. And when I was researching in July, I was like, well, what does she have coming up next? And that's when I found Nyad. 
And so it's been really exciting the last few weeks, seeing some new stills come out, seeing a new trailer, and then finally seeing the movie at its world premiere screening. I was one of the very first people to see this film in a packed audience, and I really did like this movie a lot. When it sticks to its core mission, showing us everything that goes into Diana Nyad attempting this swim, it's riveting. It is a fantastic film. It kind of reminded me of like old fashioned entertainment from the 1990s. Films like Apollo 13. Films that aren't necessarily super original or bold or going against the three act structure. Like Nyad basically gives you what you expect and what you want. You kind of know what's coming. Like only occasionally in Nyad do you get some surprises. I would say the biggest surprise in Nyad is that we have a couple scenes of visual effects that kind of take us into Nyad's psyche as she is attempting this long swim when she's on like hour 30, hour 40, and she's a little bit out of it, right? Like we all would be in that situation. Like for me, the thought of swimming nonstop for more than an hour is kind of crazy. <laughs> like imagine being in the middle of the ocean at night, two in the morning, you've been swimming for like 36 hours straight and you just have to keep going. Like obviously you would go a little bit insane <laughs> in your head. And so there is some really cool visual representation of what Diana Nyad is thinking, feeling as she gets closer to fulfilling her dream. Everything to do with her swim, the training for it, her actually out there in the water, having these people in a boat beside her as they slowly work their way towards Florida. Like everything to do with that element of the movie is 10 out of 10, is great. And that's most of the movie. That's 80 to 90% of the film. The filmmakers understand what we're there to see. I mean, this was never going to be like a super deep exploration of who she is as a person and her backstory. And you know what? I'm happy it's not because the clunkiest aspect of Nyad, something that takes it down a couple notches for me, now that I've had time to think about it the last few days, is we do explore a little bit of her past as a child and some horrible things that happened to her and none of it really works. Some of it's like the weird film stock. They do this weird filter on the scenes that show her as a kid that I found distracting. And there's just something awkward and kind of forced about those moments that never really feel related to what we're getting of Nyad in the present. I mean, I wanna say that's like six to eight minutes of the entire two hour movie, so it doesn't weigh it down that much. But when you have a film this strong, I mean, especially I would say in that last 30 minutes, this film is very exciting that ultimately it's just a minor flaw. The other flaw I would say in the movie is that some of the dialogue scenes are a little bit off, especially in the opening 20 minutes, but thankfully we do get to her training pretty quickly. And so these are just kind of minor issues I had with the movie. It's not perfect. There are some things here and there. I was like, mm, we could have taken that out. We could have extended this scene. But for the most part, when the filmmakers focus on the mission at hand, this is a terrific film. One of the most exciting aspects of Nyad easily is seeing two powerhouse actors play off each other for basically the entire movie. Annette Benning and Jodie Foster are incredible in this. I was so taken with Benning in this. She has not been this good in many years. Her athleticism in this movie is amazing. I mean, when you consider Annette Benning was not really a swimmer before she got offered this movie. The directors talked about in the Telluride Q&A about how Benning had reservations about taking on this role because Benning is also in her 60s and she wasn't really a swimmer and she was like, can I do this? Can I physically do this? What they need me to do for this movie. And so I guess she was like kind of going back and forth on it for a while. And then after she accepted the role, I guess she trained for this movie for a full year before they started rolling cameras. That's how much work Annette Benning put into this film. And of course she was already going to be superb in the dialogue scenes, in the moments of her attempting this swim. But when she has Jodie Foster to play off of and this friendship, this bond that these two characters have, and have had for many years, 
I mean, I would say Nyad is worth seeing just for Annette Benning and Jodie Foster and how they play off each other and how their friendship really takes center stage in this film. It's not just about a woman trying to do the impossible, trying to do the swim. The movie is also interested in this friendship between two lesbian women who I believe at the beginning Diana says, we had a fling once. Like there was a hot minute when we were younger where we dated, but now we're just friends. So it's about this beautiful platonic decades long friendship between these two lesbian women. Jodie Foster plays Bonnie, who was there for Diana every step of the way. She's kind of her coach at the beginning, getting her back into training. And seemingly when everyone else is doubting Diana, Bonnie is there for her friend. I mean, she speaks the truth. There is a point of this movie where even Bonnie is like, I just don't know if we can do this again. I don't know if we have the stamina. I don't know if I have the heart to see you put in harm's way because I love you. And so that's when the film gets interesting. That's when the dialogue scenes really take on a sense of power and emotion in the second half of the movie. When it seems like another attempt at this might actually kill Diana, that element of the movie works really well. I mean, Jodie Foster has always been good, but I can't remember the last time she really impressed me in a film performance like she does in Nyad. Like, it's been a while. I want to say it's been at least 15 to 20 years where she really knocked my socks off in a movie. This is that film for her. I think no matter what happens with this movie, if it doesn't get glowing reviews, if it's not a huge success, I still think Jodie Foster is going to have a very good chance at getting into Best Supporting Actress. This is not just Diana's story. This is Diana and Bonnie's story. And Jodie Foster takes on this part with gusto. She is so fierce and likable and will do everything in her power to make this swim a reality for her best friend. At the end of the day, this movie is not just about an inspiring athletic moment in our history. It's also about an inspirational friendship between two women that has lasted for decades. But then of course, there is the swim itself, many, many attempts at this long swim, and they are always represented so clearly, so exciting and visceral visually in this movie. Like you can really feel Diana's heart pounding. You can feel the pain in her arms with every stroke as she nears hour 30, hour 45. There's this makeup on her face that shows what happens when you're in the water for that long without a break. That's really well done. But the main reason I think Annette Bening deserves her fifth Oscar nomination, this one in the Best Actress category, is that the performance is so much more than just her emotional life on land, her friendship with Bonnie. They've got a couple really knockout dialogue scenes in the second half, one where they go at each other that I haven't stopped thinking about. But I feel like this could have been a movie where they substituted a stunt double for many of the swimming scenes, especially when it's like at night, when the camera is underneath <laughs> the person. Like we could have had Annette Benning step out, have a nice little break as the stunt double comes down in there. Like there is never a moment in this two hour movie where it didn't feel like I was watching Annette Benning. When the swim is happening, when she is thrashing in the water, there's a moment with jellyfish. There is a moment where she is barely clinging on to life. And every step of the way, it is clearly Annette Benning, And she is giving this role her all in a way I don't think she has in many years. Like I've never seen a physical performance from Benning quite like this one. I think what Annette Benning has accomplished in this film is extraordinary. It is one of the great performances of 2023. Her absolute determination to make this swim a reality is so infectious for the viewer. You root for her, you want her to do this. You know it's going to take everything out of her physically that this is going to be near impossible. But when someone dreams that hard and will not take no for an answer and will spend years training, rounding up the best people, doing everything she can to make this swim a reality, before it's too late, Annette Benning was the perfect actress for this role, and I think she's absolutely coming for Academy Award nomination number five. 
And then just the excitement and the emotion this movie stirs up in the viewer, especially in the last half hour. I mean, if you know this story, if you've read the story, like you kind of know how it ends. Like there's no surprises <laughs> at the end of this film. I mean, if you've seen like five other movies in your lifetime, you probably know how Nyad is going to end. Even though I knew the story and knew what was coming, I was still crying my eyes out at the end of this movie. I mean, I feel like you're kind of dead inside if you just watch the end of Nyad and you're like, okay. <laughs> like, it's just, it's it stirs something up in you. The visual representation of a lot of these moments are striking. And by the end, I was just going with this movie and I was fully on board to just let my emotions come out at the end. I have failed to say that this is the first narrative feature from the filmmakers behind Free Solo, which won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature a few years ago. So the filmmakers behind this movie have only made documentaries, but it doesn't show in terms of the performances from Annette Bening and Jodie Foster. And in fact, I would say their documentary background actually helps this film in that we do get a lot of the real Diana Nyad, like in documentary snippets throughout the movie. I thought something really clever in this film that you don't often see is that we'll have a flash of the real Diana Nyad instead of showing an awkward Photoshop picture or a visual of Annette Bening's younger face, we just show the real younger Diana Nyad. And I liked that. But even though we do see the real Diana Nyad at times, it doesn't take away from the Annette Bening performance. She's still a very lived in character, really, really fantastic. I don't think Nyad is going to be a film that gets into like best director, best picture, best screenplay at the Oscars. The two big chances this movie has are best actress for Annette Bening and best supporting actress for Jodie Foster. I do think those two nominations could happen for this movie. I mean, Best Actress already is looking pretty competitive, so Annette Bening is going to have to fight to get into that race. But I think because of the physical nature of her performance, and she has a couple of really big emotive scenes with Foster in the second half, I think she's going to make it, and I think Foster is going to get in too. Ultimately, despite a couple minor issues I had with this film, I was really taken with Nyad. I think it's absolutely worth seeing. Benning and Foster are fantastic in this, and that long swim Diana Nyad takes. By the end of this movie, your heart is racing, your palms are sweaty, and you just want to see her succeed. I think you're absolutely going to want to check out Nyad this fall. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did, and hopefully you don't cry as much as I did at the end of this movie, because I was kind of gone. I cried harder in Nyad than any other film I saw at Telluride, and so I think that says something. I give Nyad an 8 out of 10. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned in the coming days for more reviews from the Telluride Film Festival, including Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, and All of Us Strangers. We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.